It's good news to see Grindavik recovering from the lava disaster, although its uplift continues. Not far away I can see the edge of the volcano's crater lake, while to the south, steam vents and mud pools bubble. The Krafla Magma Testbid KMT, intends to advance the understanding of how magma or molten rock behaves underground. Data from GPS instruments show that the uplift of Svartsenny continues at a stable rate. Model calculations based on these data also show that magma accumulation beneath Svartsenny has continued at a similar rate over the past few weeks. According to the uplift measurements and estimates of the magma accumulation rate, the development is similar to previous events in the area. A photogrammetry team from the Icelandic Institute of Natural History IHN, and the National Land Survey of Iceland NLSI, processed data collected by specialists at EFLA Consulting Engineers during a drone survey of the eruption site. The data show that the lava flow formed during the last eruption was 61.2 million 3 and 15.8 square kilometers. This makes this latest eruption the largest in the Sun Nukru area since December 2023. The thickest part of the lava flow is located around the crater that has been active the longest. Seismic activity has been very minimal over the past two weeks in the Sun Nukru crater chain. However, there has been some activity west of Fagradal Stjal at a depth of about 6 to 8 chem since the eruption ended on September 5. There has also been considerable activity at Trolladingja in recent days. Most earthquakes in the area are small, but the largest was a magnitude 3.0 on September 22, just east of Trolladingja. No deformation has been detected in the area around Trolladingja. As long as magma accumulation continues beneath Svartsinji and the amount of magma reaches the same level as before the recent events, Magma spread and even a volcanic eruption can be expected in the Sun Nukra crater chain. However, it is still too early to say when this will happen. Given the last two events, it is unlikely that this will happen in the coming weeks. The Icelandic Meteorological Office has updated its hazard assessment, which is valid until October 3, unless there are any developments. Considerable changes have been made, mainly concerning the assessment of the hazard due to fissure and sinkhole movement, but both of these hazards have been lowered for almost all zones. The lava field is still very hot, and therefore the danger is considered high in the areas where lava flowed during the last eruption and gas pollution from the lava field is quite high. The danger from Tefra Falls is now at the lowest level in all zones. In the new hazard assessment, the overall danger for Zone 4, Grindavik is assessed as moderate, yellow level, but the danger from the sinkhole is assessed as higher or quite large. The Icelandic Meteorological Office would like to point out that the Grindavik Committee is still working on fencing and marking off the danger areas within the city. The hazard assessment does not take into account mitigation measures deemed necessary to prevent possible accidents or damage caused by hazards that are present at a given time and given area. In addition to the hazards assessed by the IMO, there are other factors that influence how great the danger associated with staying in the city at a given time is, such as limited escape routes, houses that could collapse, the danger of damaged power lines, and because of construction work filling cracks in the roads. The lava flow is still active even though the eruption has ended. Lava is expected to continue to creep forward over the next few days, and there is a risk of collapse as a result. Therefore, the eruption site is dangerous to walk on. The eruption that began on 22 August is now considered to be over, and therefore the hazard assessment has been updated. The main changes affect Zone 3, where the eruptive fissures opened at the beginning of the eruption.